I'm happy. Thanks. Thank you. We'll call Wait, it says, so y'all say no, though, Yes, sir, that's for the regular meeting. Oh, regular. Not for the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Tim, would you leave the invocation? Dear Father, we just thank you for this day, and uh, Lord, we just ask that you um, be with our district, be with all of our staff. Um, Lord, we just ask that you watch over our country and the times that we're in, and uh, Lord, we just ask that you keep our safety overall of the sort. And uh, be with us tonight, Lord, as we go about your, your business for the district, Lord. And uh, lead and guide and direct us. Forgive us when we fail you, Lord, and these things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we are in the public hearing portion of the tax I'm not sure what the other was trying to tell me. Did somebody, was somebody want to speak in the public hearing portion of the tax record? No. In the which part? For the, for Just the, the public. Yeah, it's open, right? There's two for me. Right. Right. So you wanted to speak? Was this regarding like the budget? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go Oh, you are going to already go ahead and do it? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. It's a safe meeting. Oh, okay. Hey, I just wanted to. Uh, uh -oh. Real quick, I'm going to get on it. She asked if you could borrow one of the mics to speak into. Let me turn the mics on. Oh, man. Oh, fancy like that. Uh, that well, I don't know if this is where I'll, you know, I know that if I talk now, then I can get some feedback and stuff. So, uh, I know I talked to some other school board members and all that, but I just want to let, first and foremost, I want to say our maintenance department does an outstanding job. Uh, but I guess it's been, I don't know how many years ago, but about three, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe four years ago when Mr. Tommy uh, retired, uh, I think we were having some budget issues. And we uh, got basically got rid of that that third maintenance person, and so I know that maintenance don't get paid near what uh, school teachers do. But I mean, I just want to ask. I know that we have we're having some budget issues, but and it, it sometimes Mr. Martindale back when he was here, he would get together and meet with pastors and stuff, and he even asked us as pastors. Hey, can we come up here and help with the maintenance? Can we help uh, paint? Can we help? I mean, he brought up the painting of the out front in the high school and paint the rails and mow and do all these things. So, from a personal standpoint, I, I've been in the mowing business for 25 years. And so, uh, I know how time consuming it is and all that. And so, I just want to see us as a school, as, as a board, to try to figure out. If we had three, why can't we get those three back in there? Why are we still, especially when it was supposedly supposed to be just a temporary thing, but here we are like three years down the road, and they're hustling and bustling, and, you know, it's hard for them to even keep up with mowing. I mean, we can look around and see that there's parts of it that, you know, are not mowed, and it's not on their part that they're, they're, they're just got so many things going on, so... I would just like for the school board and, and the school to see that budget-wise that why can't we get that job back in there because it was budgeted years and years and years for years and all of a sudden we take it away and now we're three or four years into it and I don't know. I just wanted to ask that question there. Don't have an answer for you. That'd be a superintendent. Have you have the maintenance people asked you for additional yeah. help? Yeah. It was my second one, John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we have we have hired uh, uh, Coach Jones. Okay. He's doing. We're doing. He's doing some temporary work for us. Okay. So we have helped him to help us get caught up. Right. So right. We well, I know it's one of those things where maintenance is probably the one that gets overlooked the most. I mean, because we're doing so much other things, but you know. They work hard. They do a great job. But I just feel like that, hey, you know, as teachers, as teachers, you want to see something that happens. And through the school years, you see something happen. You see your students grow. As a maintenance department, when you're always running behind, it, you, you, there's nothing to say, oh, I caught up for the week, or I did this. And so uh, 
it would I would just say, hey, it would be nice if we could get those three back on board there. So that's what I've got. Anybody anybody else have anything for the budget portion for the proposed tax rate and the budget? It'd be, be just y'all three, so I don't know. I'm looking at everybody. No. <laughs> you already said no. Okay, so um, any of the board members have anything to add? I think all my questions were answered at the last meeting. Nothing to add. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Tim to adjourn. I'll second. Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7 0. Uh, so we'll move to the regular meeting and go straight. Uh, we did not have anybody signed up to speak at the regular meeting, so we'll move straight to number three, the consent agenda. And I don't think you had any questions on the consent agenda. So if there are no questions on the consent agenda, can entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Now, is this going to include the, yes. the Zoom minutes as well? Yes. Okay. These were omitted. Well, Ms. Box forgot to put them in the packet, but we got them sent out late. Right. Uh, I'm the, sorry. So if you'd like to review those real quick, you're welcome. They, they're, they're in front of you then. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that. I was just um, looking back at the August 5th meeting, and I didn't look at it until late today, so I just wanted to say anything earlier. But uh, number six, it just says consideration of salary increase. So, in the minutes, is that going to be anywhere that's going to state what that is for? It's going to be like that. Because it's not going to give us a paper trail to say exactly what we did. Okay. okay. August 5th or August 6th? August 5th. August 5th. Number, August 5th. 5th. number 6. Number 6. August 5th, number 6. Um, That's how we requested it be. That's for your sake, I think. Yeah, just as long as. Okay. We know. No other questions? No, I move to, to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. I second by Tammy. Any further discussion? No discussion. Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7 0. Item number four Campus and Administrative Reports. Okay. Oh, don't care Sit here. Okay. okay. I can be close here to the, to the mic. Um, okay, so getting school underway. It's been a whirlwind of a start. Um, I think I think some things are kind of th have thrown us for a loop, but with the help of uh, Miss Brown, Miss Gustavus, and our teachers, I think we finally ironed out 45 45 <laughs> and, and how we like it to start with. Um, so the teachers have just worked really hard in setting up their rooms. They've worked really hard at making changes to their schedules to accommodate all of our students. So just really appreciate that. Um, we ha I met with uh, PTO yesterday and this year they did school supply uh, packages for our students that we could order and it was well worth it. Um, and they ended up profiting over $1,000 um, that goes to our elementary PTO. So they're looking at doing that again for next year. Um, we have something exciting coming up. We are, we didn't go, we didn't have pep rallies last year, but our elementary is going to attend the high school pep rally next Friday, but we're going to have it on the football field. Um, you know, trying to spread out in an open area and we'll do it in the morning. So it's a little bit cooler out there. Um, and so we're excited about that. Our elementary kids are very excited. Um, and then right now we're kind of planning, working with PTO, planning our fall events. Um, so we just have a lot to look forward to. Been really busy, but looking forward to great fall. Can, can I ask a, a couple questions? Yes. Uh, what, so you said y'all ironed out 45-45. What? I think so. What, <laughs> you know, what did, exactly did we iron out? Um, we, well, we looked at kind of the kids, are their needs. Um, we decided to do a 30-minute block of time um, called WIN time, and it stands for what I need time so those all the kids are getting kind of what they need during that time and um, for fourth and fifth grade that win time is a 30-minute block first thing in the morning 8 to 8 30 
and um, so that's when that's going to be happening for sixth grade. It's later on in the afternoon at 12:30. It fits better into their schedule and during their day. And we saw that we were going to be over the three to one ratio, and so. Um, in the ARD meetings we're having and in the parent meetings we're having, we're going ahead and getting a waiver for backup. And a way that we have remediated that is um, through the T class grant that we applied for. Um, we applied, there's some money in there for us to reimburse tutors to come in. And so I've reached out to Kim Smith and Elaine Bean and Joan McCowan to come and help. And so far, um, I think Miss. Miss Bean is good to go, and the other two are mulling it over, making sure everything's good, and going to let me know. So we are um, be good to have them back on our campus and doing what they do best. So that's kind of how we're able to meet that three-to-one ratio. And if we have to pivot and make adjustments, well, that's the kind of the theme of the last couple of years. So we'll just continue to do that. And Miss Brown is our 45-45 um, coordinator, so she keeps up with the paperwork, make sure we're doing everything we need to do. So. So far, it's ironed out, <laughs> in theory. That's good. Uh, and, and then uh, on the reading academies, are, are we progressing there? We have, everybody has got, most people have gotten started in the modules. Um, the modules one, two, and three are due September 9th. Um, yeah. Passed. Yeah, it's coming up. So they've been, I guess the modules opened August 9th, and so we've had kind of a month in there. But, um, yeah, it's. It's, it's interesting. With, um, with, with the beginning of school and, and COVID and everything else, have we been able to do any of the, the uh, substitutes for them? Not yet. Um, we had some ideas of what we were going to do just because we're already noticing shortage on subs. So we're having to plan to change how we're going to do that. So. It's coming up pretty fast, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So are the teachers that have started here working on their own time then? Have yes, if they've started on it, they've worked, they've done it on their own time. Just and getting we, subs in as well. At the last meeting, we said that we weren't going to do that, right? That there were going to be subs provided for them. Yes, the that was yes, that was the plan. And then we get in and we realize that there are trying to find subs is hard right now. And then we've just pulled three um, to do our tutoring during the day. We're so we're gonna, so we're yeah. gonna have to look at that. Deadline and running out of people. That's right. Mm -hmm. So then, are we going to go back and think about uh, money for them? I, I don't have a problem with that. I think we should. <laughs> if they're not going to get us that, are we going to give them money? Right. <laughs> the teachers and staff. Yeah, they're not. Initially, we had someone set. you set aside for that, but then right. everything changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and as y'all know, it's changing daily with us too. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, and I mean that's that's definitely something that as we. You know, as we let it shake out and, and, you know, see what the teachers had to do for this first module, see where the budget, you know, flows a little bit after we, we get into things. If, if we get a grant that covers some expenses that we thought we were going to have to cover, you know, we, we'll know what, how, how much money we have to work with there and, and see what we can do, how much time they're putting in on, on their own time. We would award them like a stipend or something like that. <clears throat> yeah. I think that'd be the easiest way to do it because tracking hours are going to be tough. Oh, yeah. So it has to be completed this year. I mean, we had to start this year. Christy got to answer that. Yes, one. yes. So we they actually extended it. So um, we've got some other teachers doing it next year. Um, so it has to look that. So not all of them are doing have to do it complete it this year. Right. We originally said that we want all of our teachers to complete it. And then after 45, 45 dropped in our last year, so those teachers are going to be overloaded with that. So we took off like our fourth, fifth, fourth and fifth grade teachers and Ms. Brown um, and said, okay, they're going to be busy with this. So we moved them to next year. And then uh, Region 6 um, is reimbursing us for that. So we can apply it to next year. And it's it's like a, a year or it's 11, 11 months, months yeah, 11 October? Months. And you throw all the 45-45 on top of it. It makes for a very tough year. Oh, yeah. I know that compensation is always a great, I mean, no one's ever going to turn down compensation, but is there anything else that we can do as far as personal time or giving any? Because, you know, they're losing time. Right. And, you know, if you can't give money, 
if it doesn't work out many, is there time that we can give, personal days that we can give, or something else that we could give that could help? I think when we discuss this, we kind of get something going, I think we look at all the options. Okay. We have a lot, we can put in a lot of extra professional development days through the year that we didn't have last year um, to help with that. So on those teacher days that it's professional development, that's what we're going to be expecting like our reading teachers to do. You know, we might have a quick staff meeting about something that's going to be work on that um, together, and then math will have something else that we do. So. But will the step development days coincide with the due dates? The, the, ones, in the, the ones in the spring do. The okay. ones in the spring coincide um, mm -hmm. better than the ones in the fall. We've yeah. got um, the one in the fall that we normally have the first one is for parent teacher conference day in September. Um, so they won't have that. So we're just going to have to come back to the drawing board. I'll get back with Ms. Davis and Lindy and um, Ms. Brown, and we'll have to just. So are you saying? Is Ms. Pestle still going to go through this training? No, she doesn't have to anymore. Okay, so did you pick someone to take her place? Because weren't you scheduled to do the one? Yes, um, I'm doing the, that one now. I'm doing my, my reading cabinet. So right nobody's now. taking her place? Um, Ms. Pestle's place? I think, I, you know, I think well, Miss G, but she already had one, and then someone was taking Miss G's, but she's doing it next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and my, my last question is, are, are, I was looking at all the new hires, and I know sixth grade, both are new to the district. Mm -hmm. Are there any other grades where all the teachers are new to the district? That's the only one where both the teachers are new. Okay. Um, with them both being new to the district, are, are we offering them any extra support? Oh, yes. We've got Ms. G, who's working with um, Ms. Whitaker in reading language arts and also Ms. Teston and she's also working with um gosh, Ms. Woodard, Julie Woodard, Junior High. So kind of because you know sixth grade is kind of we want them to be prepared to go to seventh. Transition. So we're kind of working together. Yes. Um, and then Ms. Brown is working with Ms. Woodard. Um, and Ms. Woodard's taught sixth grade math for a long time. So it's mainly just processes of our campus and, and mentoring that way. Okay. That that's all I have. All right, I know I kind of sound like a broken record. Um, I always have a lot of good things to say. we got a lot of good kids at our school. so um, <clears throat> Our enrollment is kind of hanging around the 228. Uh, we kind of fluctuate up and down. And some kids kind of go out, some kids kind of come in. So um, there's not a whole lot of uh, a, a big difference in that. Um, I do want to just say we've you know been really kind of working on our, our COVID prep <clears throat> the last couple weeks. And um, in the cafeteria, we're not doing necessarily the same with the dividers. Um, because they just kind of lean around the dividers. So we are spreading everybody out. So we've got, if you come in the high school, you'll see we'll, we'll have uh, some of our tables kind of in the foyer a little bit. Um, we, we put those away um, before and after lunch, but <clears throat> we're just trying to spread everybody out. We're putting two kids per bench on each side. So there's about four to five kids on each side. So it, it works, um, it spreads them out. Um, no one um, has had any problems with it. They just don't want the dividers. So we'll do whatever, they'll do whatever they have to do so we don't have to have the dividers. Um, if we have to go back to the dividers, we will. Um, also, we're taking temperatures on students every day as they come in. We're just kind of kept that process. Um, I don't know that we never necessarily declared it, but I mean, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't take too long. We just kind of um, check the temperatures real quick at the door as kids come in. Uh, teachers, are, teachers are cleaning um, in between classes. Um, and then on break, we're trying to get um, the uh, custodians to go in and fog every room that we can get. Um, and on conferences, we're trying to get them to go in those classrooms and fog as well. So we're trying just to keep it as clean as possible um, and, as, um, and, uh, and wipe those things down as much as possible. Uh, we're still providing masks. Uh, we have those at the front and hand sanitizer everywhere around that we can. We're just helping our kids to try to have that <clears throat> readily available. Um, so as things come up, you know, it's kind of hard to predict, um, you know, but we're just trying to look forward, trying to make it as normal as possible, because, um, I mean, the last year was pretty traumatic for, for the kids, so we're trying to get that part back, but yet keeping it so we're not being irresponsible either, so. Um, <clears throat> kind of moving on, volleyball, they're doing excellent this year. There's, I'd say the record is probably not what it used to be, but they've been playing some huge powerhouse schools, so it is not really remotely reflective. I mean, they've been playing five and six A schools and they're holding their own. I mean, I, I would say I'm so proud of those girls and I say it all the time, but 
Like you watch them go up against, you know, some of these five and six A schools, and they're hanging in. I mean, they they beat Huntsville, Fort Bend, Belton, which is a six A. It's a huge six A. Um, Porter, and then they got second in the silver bracket at the uh, Brazos Valley tournament, which uh, College Station won that. They're in the Navasota tournament right now. Uh, they've already advanced to the gold bracket. Uh, they beat Franklin. Um, they beat Caldwell, and they were beating Snook, which I would assume they <coughs> would, would take that one. So I don't know um, how that turned out, but they were winning. Um, so they're doing really good. I mean, just all things um, that, that they've kind of had to, to face this year, they're doing an amazing job. Um, I'm sure everybody wants to know, the gym floor is moving forward. Um, it is sanded, and we are now getting it painted. So they were painting the logo as I was leading, uh, leaving today, and they were calling, making sure it was facing the right direction and everything. So um, <laughs> that's important. That's it's important. hard to go back from that. I'm guessing we're keeping the home side, home side. Okay? I asked Miss. I was right there. I was like, Miss, you better answer this. Um, she says, yes, we're keeping home side, home side. Um, they've gotten all the bleachers in. The bleachers look really nice. Um, I think we, I can't remember, we went up a step um, and then they're a little bit more efficient. So um, I think we have added several hundred more um, if you combine on both sides. And they look really nice. They're going to they really look sharp. And we have kind of, handrails. Yeah, we got handrails walking <laughs> up. It's even kind of mesmerizing to watch them go in because they automatically turn and go up and stuff. So we're moving up in the world. Um, that's right. I know they do. Those girls are awesome. Um, football plays against Thrall tomorrow. Um, so go out uh, for the boys. We'll be leaving pretty early. It's a pretty far drive. Um, the pep rally, thank you, um, is next Friday. It'll be here at the stadium. We're going to try to do it at 9.30 just so that we don't have to bother with car line. Um, we kind of talked a lot about it. Uh, we want to make and the sure. heat. Yeah, and the heat. Uh, yeah, it's way too hot at 3 and 4 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> we want to be able to give that to them. We need to get some normalcy back. Um, we don't have a gym, obviously, um, and even the elementary gym is just too small. So we are going to let all the students sit on the home side, and if parents would like to come, um, we're just going to allow them to sit on the visitor side. So um, I know that's one of the big things. Parents want to come. This is their kids. It might be their senior year. Um, so, I mean, we just let them sit on the visitor side. We don't have any problem with that. We kind of try to trim that. Um, one announcement, um, Ava Pointer said next week uh, the board must be ready for yearbook pictures. Um, she will be here to take pictures. So, next week. Um, yes, Miss Teston is on that. Um, she is making sure that that yearbook is ready to go. So she said be looking nice next uh, next, next, next board, next next board meeting. Next board meeting, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe not next week, next board meeting. Um, rush week, we're going to do a rush week. We haven't done it in a while. Uh, Miss Inman had a good idea. I wanted to bring that back. Kind of our clubs are kind of dwindling. Um, so we're going to have rush week starting next week. And everybody that wants that has a club um, will have an opportunity to have a table out there. You can kind of get people signed up because we want those kids working, you know, in some of those different activities as well. So we're getting that going again. Um, our band is doing a great job. Uh, they're going strong. They've already been doing a lot of rehearsals. Um, they really look sharp. Um, Mr. Santos um, has done a great job. And then we got to tell you guys last week, uh, our last board meeting, Ms. Dainty is our assistant band director. So um, she has come along and that just worked out. That was really a blessing. Um, KBTX did a great piece um, on the Senior Sunrise. She came out and she was just going to kind of do interviews like she had been doing. Um, Fallon Appleton did and uh, ended up saying, wow, this is a really great thing. She just kind of got involved. She ended up staying over there for an hour and a half, interviewed a whole bunch of kids, a whole bunch of teachers, a bunch of parents. Um, she was so impressed with it. She was like, this is probably one of the best communities, best experiences I've had, you know, in, in, in the school districts this year. So she was so mm -hmm. impressed with it, she wanted to do a whole piece on it. So she did actually an article, and then um, the 10 o'clock news had a thing on it. So um, she was very impressed. and. Um, we were really excited that she uh, did that for us. So, uh, the last thing, uh, the teachers wanted to thank the anonymous donation of some lovely treats that were dropped off in the lounge. Um, so thank you very much. Y'all good day. Thank you, sir. I have two questions. When is the estimated completion date for the gym? <coughs> do we have one? Yeah, I'll let him answer that. Okay. So they're telling me September 13th. But if they get the graphics on, they're already two days ahead. We were 
best case scenario, we could be in there Monday, September the, what's the first Monday of that? The 6th. Okay. Which would be good because they have a game on the 7th, which would give them one preseason game there before they went into the district. <clears throat> but it's really come along the last couple of days. Uh, we're, we're excited. The, the bleachers all roll in together. They really look nice. So we just got to get the graphics down and top coat on. The asphalt, you know, I, I see where they came before the year <coughs> and redid that spot. Are they going to come back and seal that? I see do not right know. Now they got a question. I, I, yeah, I see they had cones over it now. But. Yep. They've been up for almost a week. Well, they didn't do nothing when we were getting all that rain, and then they came back and right. tore it all back out and redid it, but they haven't sealed it. And the cones are still there. Yeah. 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 I saw them tonight. But at some point, we've got to also reseal that, that parking lot uh, by the gym, because I don't think it's ever been resealed. Probably not. So that's going to have to happen at some point. So no. that way. My second question was, are, are COVID cleaning protocols the same at the elementary other yes. than the high school? Yes. Are we taking temperatures for the elementary kids we're too? Not. We no. Just no, we're not. Um, I mean, we, we talked about going and starting that with Sandra and with hands for sure. We've got thermometers, that's for sure. Um, yeah, and, and our lunch is kind of the same thing. We're spacing them out. We're adding more tables um, and we're spacing the kids out to a, to a bench. Um, so, there's not as much as we can. But we are trying to spray their rooms when the teachers yes. are out. We're trying to spray and wipe down. Yeah. Teachers wipe down each, in between each group that they pull. Um, desk wipe <coughs> down in between switching classes. Um, in centers, students um, use hand sanitizer before they go into centers and when they're leaving. Um, so, and then when it's logged yesterday. Do we have many kids in either elementary or high school that are voluntarily wearing no mask? Mm -hmm. okay. On, uh, at the high school uh, for 4545 uh, has uh, ha has have y'all gotten that plan straightened out yes to the most that we can so we are <coughs> very lucky that we were able to get Ms. Destin and Mr. Jolly mm -hmm. and that was one of those things that has allowed us to work that out um, had we not um, that would be almost impossible to have done that but um, Lindsay's got it worked out really well we've moving pairs around to help kind of support some of those classes that are lawyer to make sure that we have that ratio but um, we are yeah we are doing really well and getting all that prepared as well. So it sounds like both schools we we have a good plan for forty five forty five. It's it's a pain in the neck but but we're making it work. Yes sir. Any more questions? Okay. All right so on my report uh, Mr. Fowler was talking about our athletic people traveling, and we have been paying six dollars a meal since I know in 2003. And you can't hardly go and buy a kid a meal for six bucks. I mean, you just can't hardly do it. So we are going to increase that from six to eight dollars. It'll cost us if we start to do the same amount of meals we did last year. It cost us an extra twelve hundred bucks, but they can eat for eight bucks. And so we're just, we've just we kind of included that. That's in our, we, we make it work in our budget. We were under budget last year, uh, this past year, so we think we can make it work by going to $8 a meal. So I'm just going to kind of let y'all know that. And that'll start here immediately, but I want to tell y'all first. So what what does Brian do? For $6. Six. Okay. And you should see me. I try to make every meal I can. I, <laughs> I, I whine and I cry and I moan and everything. And this is the, these kids can't have no, you know, this is the best meal, so McDonald's does this pretty good. I throw a cherry pie in there, so we, <laughs> we squeeze it as much as we can. And, and that's, what our, that's what our people are telling me. We just can't doing, I, I think I'm, I'm totally in agreement with y'all that $8 is a lot better than okay. what it is. And they, they get it each away game, right? Yes, right. Yeah. And that goes for volleyball, that goes right. you know, on now. Now, there's, like, if we go to North Zulz, we're not feeding. We go to Normandy, we're not right, feeding. Right, right. Uh, if we go to Snook, we'll probably feed. Right. Yeah. You're, you're bucking for a for a statue to be built, too, huh? <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're trying. We're really trying to treat our kids the way they need to be trying. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. Boy, you're giving me $8. I'll have a steak on that. <laughs> 
Uh, one other thing, uh, Oscar Freud, uh, kind of reviewing our, the crisis we had at the end of school last year. A lot of people were on their cell phone. And he would like to get some Motorola, uh, I'm going to call them walkie-talkies, but they're radios. Uh, they'll be on their own frequency. He wanted to get eight for all the administrators. And so that way, when we're having a crisis, we're not on our phones. We're able to communicate a little better, but we're not blasting it out, the information, like on a walkie-talkie. Well, I know, because uh, I, I was on the safety committee, I think Ms. Roberts was on there, and we talked about getting getting them, and I guess it never sure. never happened. There was, we were supposed to get vests and all kinds of stuff. That way, when everybody's running around, and they see the vest, they know, you know, it's a, a staff member or... Right. We have, was it the, we have the vest. We, uh, was it the yellow highlight vest? I, it was supposed to be something visible, you know, where right. they can throw it on real quick. So uh, he's putting on a proposal for eight radios, which would be right at $2,000. Uh, but I think that's that's money well spent. We, we can find that money pretty easy. Uh, but that's that's a safety issue, so I just want to kind of let you know on that. So what what eight, who who would be getting those? Well, so some of that's going to be uh, Mr. Freud's decision, uh -huh. Mr. Freud, but it'll be the three administrators here, and we're probably going to do the secretaries. That way we're all on that, that one page. So one of the one of the things that came up, just the community talking to me after they talked to their kids, is a lot of the kids that were across the street or at the baseball field, they didn't know, you know, the, the, the teachers had their phones, but I mean, if you're actively in practice, you're not sitting on your phone. So, you know, there were, there were concerns about how the, the people that are outside of announcement range are, are notified of that stuff. Because I actually think that <clears throat> some that were at the track were notified because somebody went to the bathroom and looked at their phone. And, and, and one of the kids at the main campus had said something. They ran out and said, get in the bathroom. So, I mean, we might want to consider, you know, as those coaches go across the street or something like that. We are they be assigned. Yeah, we at our place I'm me and the other the lady coordinator has a, a walkie talkie or radios to where it's something you know, we we know ahead of time that something's happening or fire drill or anything, they, they notify us on that on okay. that frequency. So, so. Well we we may do more than eight then. I mean yeah. we may go to ten. Do you have to leave every day if you, if you, I mean, is it like standard practice if you leave to go outside of the compound? Take it with you. you. Take it with yeah, you. you have, it's a little hook that you put on here. Mm -hmm. I don't like them, but, you know, but. It's like carrying a brick in it. But I mean, if a parent's calling for their kid, you know, we're down on the field, we, we know that we can bring them. I know at that time the buses were getting loaded. Yes. I know the bus drivers have their own mm -hmm. frequency. Would well, they be able to tie in and talk to that, or will you have well, to give with Callahan and Callahan? We probably had to give with Callahan and him be on their frequency. It's kind of the same kind of right now. Okay. Uh, some of the good news: we have 45 students in uh, kindergarten. Also, kind of the bad news: we got 45 kids in kindergarten. Uh, our, our teachers feel a little overwhelmed. We're, we're trying to lay some contingency plans there. But just kind of let you know that that, that grade is kind of is expanded on us. Uh, on our COVID, we, we had a meeting this morning on our COVID protocols. We're going to get some things kind of nailed down. We'll get that out to y'all. Uh, but we're kind of going back to some similar policies that we had last year uh, with the checking the temperatures. They kind of do that voluntarily. But we want to kind of move back to make sure everybody knows that if it's 10 days without it, 10 days if you're showing signs, if you've tested positive, and then you've got to come back. You have to wait your 10 days. No negative tests re required to come back. If you don't get tested, then it's 14 days. So that's just kind of standard. Uh, right now, we're looking at, I think, 11. Did you have one today? So we're looking at 11 elementary kids that are out, five secondary kids, and three faculty. So that's kind of our, our numbers right now. They kind of hit us two days ago. It kind of spiked. We thought we'd be getting more, but we didn't. We only got one today, and we're going to get <clears throat> a couple back next week, I believe. Is, the, is Do you know if the teachers are vaccinated or, or were they? <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, we hadn't seen them to ask. Oh, uh, one was. I know one was. The first one was. 
Sometimes I mean, I volunteer, but I don't know what they ask me. Okay. Uh, our rapid bus will be in. It's actually ready now, but Mr. Callahan is out. He's had some uh, health issues, nothing serious. And so he's going to go pick it up. I think Discount put the wrong size tire on that bus, so he wants to take it back and get them swapped out. They said they would swap them out before we get them back. So we're going to make alternate plans for tomorrow for those. those. We're going to use that bus tomorrow to go to Thrall, but we're not going to be able to debut it tomorrow. Is that the little bus? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. the, the and so our total enrollment right now, we're up to 544. Now, in our book, that we set that out Monday or whatever, but we're up to 544 now. So that's, that's a really good number for us. And on the, sorry, the COVID deal, so now do we have to contact trace? Like, say, you know, a, a student tests positive. We don't have to, like we were doing last year. We do, like, semi. Semi, right. Uh, right. We're sending out, the, the principals are sending out letters. Right. And so that they're, they're knowing that it's... We've had another case. That, so that was a requirement. TA right, changed yeah. that back. Right. But they're not having, as long as they're not showing symptoms and stuff, they don't have to. It's just now the ones that are in the home for prolonged exposure will have to do the mandatory quarantine. The other ones, like we have some situations where maybe they were exposed by a friend or anything right. they come in every morning and get screened by Sondra for 14 days. <coughs> so if they're not showing any signs, we're going to move on to the then we go a different route. And on the, um, on the uh, vaccination clinic that mm -hmm. we sent the email out, did we get a good response on that? I think it's up to 45 right now. And I think that list is going to keep growing. So we've got enough that we're going to, we're going to have to come in. Do, you, do we know which vaccine they're bringing? I do not know that. That will be set up through the health department. Okay. That's all reports, unless y'all got questions. I was going to say just one thing. When we go back to the radios, mm -hmm. um, have, you know, a little maybe a broader, I mean, I understand he said eight, but I think there's some other points that kind of, kind of came up, and maybe it would be better that if we had maybe more of them or we had more ideas about, you know, if we can do that. You know, fact staff or faculty are going out, you know, outside of it, you know, to the track or whatever, that they bring one and, and kind of some protocols with that. We, we can do that. That's not a problem. I was just, he... He came to me and he designated six people, and I said, "Okay, let's get eight. And so, if y'all want to do more, we can, we can go more. We can go to ten, or we can go to twelve. Uh, we we can find people to put them on. Well, with that safety, the the safety deal we had, we had a lot of money. I know because we wrapped windows, we were doing all kinds of stuff. I don't. Some yeah. of that money is going to go for cameras. If I'm not mistaken. Right, cameras. Uh, there was a few things. We haven't met in a while. It's been, yeah, you know, we had a lot of stuff lotted out or money to spend. I, I think it's just important that you know we we buy the number that we need based on whatever protocol we come up with for who who needs them. You know, and, and you know I don't think you will get any pushback at all to buy whatever number we need. Okay. Item number five, consideration of budget amendments. All right, guys. Okay, so as y'all know, we're wrapping up our <coughs> fiscal year. So we're going to need just a little bit of money to, to make sure that we have enough money. We still have a few bills out, so we want to have some money in there so when they come in that they will be in there we have it all paid off. So y'all got the, the main page. I'm going to kind of break it down just a little bit. Uh, in function 36, we had some extra money. We're going to shift out of 36 into 34, which is our transportation from athletics. We had some extra money there. We're going to shift it in there, which is 15,000. All right. Uh, 41, we're going to shift it also into 34 to 15,000. And if you'll go down now, I know you're going to ask me this, and I'm uh, I'm going to say that uh, on the 207,595.50. That is your designated money that y'all had for the projects, okay? And so if you will look on that, I can tell you on the first one, I'm going to give you the, the 25000 that is going into 3462, that's the transportation. That's going to be our bus. That's with the wrap and all that kind of stuff. Air conditioner, I think, that was on that list. Okay, and then 51, the 140, that's for the gym and the bleachers. 
We need to move that in there. And then into 51, it is the resurfacing of the parking lot across the street. And then on the bottom one, it, that is going to be some of the retention stipends. So that's how that money is divided out in that account. So we're taking the 207 and divided it into those four accounts. And all of that was designated? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And there's still some money in there that we've designated that we have not spent. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So now this gets tricky. So just kind of follow what I'm going to say. It's an in and out process. This is what's required by our auditor. So we take 240, we, when it's 22,000, but we think by the time we get to the end, it's going to be closer to 30,000. That's why she's wanting to put 30 in there, so we have just a little bit over, and our, our alters want us to come back and we'll, we'll ship it later. But So you got to put it in 240, the first one is going out, then it's going back in, then the next one is going out, going back in, then we get to 99, it's going out, and then it goes back in. That's the way our alters want the track. So we said if that's the way y'all want it, that's the way we would do it. So that's how that, that's why it's on there. You got six times if you've got 30,000. No. no. So we're just, we're well, just transferring it out of 240 to 199 eventually. Yes, that's correct. Well, well they just want it this way. That's correct. That's to cover all that stuff. And, and why they want six accounts, I don't know. <laughs> okay. But they're the ones doing our audit and they have, they have a, a method to the madness. And so we do what they want us to do on that deal. We just don't want to get in trouble on our audit. Okay. Any questions about the money that we need to shift and move from one account and then from the money coming, I guess, that's designated? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Anytime we designate, we, we have to do a, a budget amendment at the end, right? That's if, the way if we're spending it yes. from a designation, yes. we have to do the budget amendment. Because you designate it has to be certain, you spent a certain way. Right, exactly. Once you designate it. So you can't pull it out and do salaries if you're not right. designated that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, that's it in a nutshell. I'll move that we accept this. That's safe. I'm sorry, I'm thinking. Thinking back to the do we not have to move the other the other bus? But that was that was insurance. That was insurance. Never mind. Never mind. Right, okay. Answer my question. All right. Motion and second. I second that. Okay. Motion will be here. Second by Ren. Uh, any discussion? Can those in favor raise your hand? Motion carries 7 0. Item number six consideration of adopting the budget for the 2021 2022 school year. We've been through it, so unless y'all want to, nothing's read, changed. Yeah, nothing's changed. We've been through this several times. Local workshops. Uh, it's just the final act. If, um, if you have something to discuss, we can get it on the table. If not, let's get a motion and approve it. Motion by Tammy to approve the budget as presented. Second. Second by Deidre. Any discussion? Okay, those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7-0. And moving to item number seven, consideration of the resolution adopting tax rate for uh, tax year 2021 for Iowa ISD. Again, nothing's changed. Uh, we do have some extra people here. Do you want to cover that rate real quick for them? Oh, uh, we can. Okay. okay, so to cover our expenses, uh, we call it our M&O, our maintenance and operations <coughs> side. Uh, we have an 87.2, or excuse me, 87.2 cents uh, per hundred. And then on our INS, which pays for all of our bonds, it is 17 cents. And so that gives us a total tax rate of 104,200, which is almost 8 cents lower than our tax rate from last year. So we're going to be able to do some really good things and give everybody a, a, almost an 8 cent tax rate per hundred. So now on this, we have to make the motion mm -hmm. according to that. Yeah. Whoever makes it, it'll need to be read exactly as it is in there. I too. The two uh, paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to point out that that uh, I had asked Mr. Dyer to to look at some of the other tax rates around us, and I couldn't find a, a district that was lower. You know, I mean, College Station is 1.2152, Bryan's 1.2268, Anderson's 1.1005. Uh, 
Navisota's 1.24799, North Zulch's 1.176, and Richard's is, I guess, the closest, 1.077. I mean, that, that's pretty darn good. I think it's a great tax rate, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. No discussion. I'll entertain a motion. So we have to read this exactly. <laughs> yes. No. Who wants to read? <laughs> I, I guess I'll I'll read it. I move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 1.04200, which is effectively a 2.14 percent increase in the tax rate. This is an INS tax rate of uh, 0.17 and an M and O tax rate of 0.872 for 2021. This would be a total tax rate of 1.04200 for 2021. You were the sucker that talked about raising taxes. <laughs> well, <laughs> get a second and I want to say something. <laughs> second my ten. <laughs> Uh, it's open for discussion. <laughs> so I want to point out that the reason the state makes us say that this is an increase in taxes is because we will generate more in income. So uh, the, on the budget, I mean, it, it is truly a decrease for most folks, but we're going to raise about $62,000 more than we did on local property tax, you know, last year because everybody's building houses and, and everything else. So your, your valuation went up, but your tax rate's going down. I did my calculation and I'm saving about a hundred bucks. You know, uh, so I mean, I, I, know it's, I, I know it's not going to, you know, pay somebody's car note, but you know, we, if we had left it up, you know, it would have been several hundred up, about 500 up. So. But in the community, when it reads like that, yeah. The word increase, that's always the same. That's why I wanted to say that specifically. So we're on video in multiple places saying the reason that it says an increase is because we're collecting more, but not because the rate is going up. It's actually going down. It's going the opposite direction. Yes. Any further discussion? Okay, those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7-0. Track. Eight, yes. Item number eight, consideration of the Brown County Tax Assessor Collection Collector Certification 2020 Excess Debt Collection and 2021 Anticipated Collection Rate. Have anything on that, Mr. Dyer? <coughs> no, it's just your, your tax collection rate is anticipated to be 100.57, excuse me, 59. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I make a motion to approve. We, you want to discuss it any, Jason? No, you make a motion, somebody okay. second, I'll open for discussion. To approve the tax assessor collector certification of 2020 excess debt collection and 2020 anticipated collection rate. I'll second. Okay, motion by Ms. Mallet. And a second by Alec. Any discussion? I have no discussion. Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7 0. Item number nine, consideration of board resolution for interlocal agreement for DAEP with Madisonville ISD. Is that the same rate we had last year? Yes, sir. Okay, no increase. The same, same, same everything. A lot cheaper for us to go that route than yes, sir. we try to do it ourselves. Make a recommendation that we approve the resolution for the interlocal agreement. Okay. Second. We have a motion, second by Ms. Mallet. I, uh, any further discussion? I do have a question. Uh, on this agreement, it says that you know we're we're contracting for up to three students, a hundred dollars. If four or more students are assigned, the superintendents have the authority to negotiate additional costs. Uh, it, does it end up staying at a hundred dollars if we do more? Or had, but he, I, to my knowledge, he did not call Mr. Martindale last year because I know that we had one time we had more than four. Right. And I don't think it it moved at all. Okay. And maybe, maybe if there's some kind of situation that went well, on, maybe, 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 maybe they got more. full and they need to hire a sub, maybe they can not We have a line just budgeted just, just for this, didn't yes. we? And they went over it last year, didn't we? Yes, yes. 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 we had extra. We had extra. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. It depends on the year. So, any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion. Here you raise your Sorry, I missed it. 
Item 10, consideration of approval of additional updates to student handbook. Those are the ones that are following. If y'all want to see, I've kind of read through those. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on those questions? So, I mean, this is this is just basically 45-45 stuff. And, and y'all told us what the plan was already, so. I think enough to recommend to update the solution for 2021-22. Okay, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. The motion carries 7-0. All right, number 11, consideration of Grimes. Okay, so go ahead and do this, but I need to tell you something. Okay, consideration <coughs> of Grimes County Special Education Services Arrangement. Okay, so I put this in there not knowing until about three o'clock today that y'all had done a resolution with Mr. Martindale last January. I thought this had to be approved through y'all. I didn't know he signed a resolution to go ahead and sign it and be done with it. So this really doesn't have to be in here because y'all already given the authority to do that. So I put it in here not knowing that that piece of information so we can skip this. One. So we granted the superintendent the authority? Yes, according to the resolution that y'all did in yeah. January. Which it was pretty good though because I actually got in and did some numbers on it that I didn't, you know, hardly anybody ever reads the agreements. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the numbers, we kind of went through it today and we, we picked out the numbers and sent that out to y'all. That's what that was. When, when I sent you those questions, I, I, um, I went back and, and looked and it was a little deja vu because I had sent pretty much the same ones back in January. So, so do we just table this or do we just... No we can action. just skip it. No, no, action. Action. Yeah. no action on it. All right. The next one. Item 12, consideration of resolution to the board of, wait, to the board of directors of the Grimes County Central Appraisal District. Does see anybody know anybody that might want to, to serve on that? We've always done a board member. It does not have to be a, a school board member that serves in that position. I haven't asked anybody if they're interested. Okay, then. Do you have any advice on qualifications or, or I mean, interest level or, I mean, I don't know, I mean, anything that might help come up with names? No. Before Scott was on there. Was it Chad? Was no, it I think it was David Moore. David, mm -hmm. yes. He was there for a while. Or maybe Lynn Giles. I think one of those. I think David and then maybe Liam. Mm -hmm. I think Scott followed David. Nobody's raising their hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to draw straws. How long is it? I mean, is it? I mean, I've been in here starting two years. Two years. Think, so, but it's not dependent on being a school board member, correct? It is not. And we've got to have this turned in by October. October. So we don't have to do it tonight, but I'm glad we, unless you tell me differently. Well. Madisonville, they want to know by tomorrow because they've got votes. Can our superintendent serve? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> 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 I thought I'd interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that guy. Uh, but Madisonville has a certain amount of votes. Oh, I mean, they, have, they, have they don't have a whole lot. One. But whoever we nominate, they're going to cast their votes for our guy. That's what they've always done. And so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deidre, do you want to start on that? She <laughs> raised her hand. <laughs> yeah. Jump down. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's lots of things I would like. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm concerned about time. I mean, just. What about you, Ellen? With any job. <laughs> and he didn't raise his hand either. He got real silent all of a sudden, which is unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, look, if, if, if nobody's going to say yes and we have to turn it in tomorrow, I'll say I'll do it. Sure. I like well, last did you didn't know what. <laughs> Good question. I'm hungry. <laughs> I, I, would do, I would do the same, Alec, but since you beat me to it. Oh, there you go. I'll nominate well, you. I'll let I will you. nominate you. Would, would you like me to nominate <laughs> you back? I'll nominations uh, yeah. for the Board of Directors of Brown County Central Appraisal District. And after I open them, I do nominate Alec. <laughs> Any other nomination? Is, it, is a nomination deal? Is that how we do this? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So I move to close nomination. <laughs> 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 I have a second. Yeah. Okay, since there's only one nominee, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. He found it very interesting. 
I, I, I know old Diana Westmoreland. She, she'll do most of the work. That's good. Thank you, sir. We're we're no problem. That. Item 13, before he changes, my consideration of new rules for the homeschool UIL access for House Bill 547. Okay, so a little late to the party on this deal. This thing actually came out in July, and we had to have a decision made by August the 1st. Well, as y'all know, kind of went on, got by us. So the ramifications of that, UIL is saying that this is something that school districts can do if they so choose to do. What it means is any homeschool children that you have in your district, you can allow them to come and to participate in any of your extracurricular activities without having to attend school. So there's there's a little bit of stuff to it. There's some facts in, on the links there. But because we did not have this done by August the 1st, it only affects the athletic side of the bill. That means that they will, a homeschool student will not be allowed to participate in varsity athletics. They would still be allowed to part, uh, participate in sub-varsity. Uh, band and cheerleaders and whatever else you want to do, UIL. Anything that we offer extracurricular, they're allowing that. But with that being said, um, it is every school district in the state of Texas, it is their option. Now, what it, there is one qualification. If you have a home school that's in a, another, like in, in North Zulch, the home schools in North Zulch, they have to go to a school in North Zulch to participate in them. They can't come to home. It has to be within that district the school does. Same thing, it's the same UIL residency rule is what it is. But, but you can't have a transfer. Right. No transfer. So that keeps people from saying, oh, you live in North Zulch, once you be a home school, you come down over yeah. with football for us. Yeah. Because they don't play football. That was, that's, that's what they're trying to get away from. Okay. Okay. And so, if the home school program, you know, some of those have like basketball and volleyball and that kind of stuff. So if there's one of those programs active that covers our district, can they still come here as well? Okay, as long as that resides inside our district. It all depends on this geographic thing. Where the student resides. That's but they right. could not participate in both. Right. Well, that's correct. They that's could correct. not do it one of the other. school league and our yeah. school. Yeah. But it, it has to be one or the other. And that's usually where the homeschool children, they can play as many games as they want to. They go different. They have different rules to go by, right. and so that's why they choose most of the time not to come to the school because they can play volleyball year round. It's kind of like playing club ball or basketball year round. So what you were saying, just to make sure I'm understanding correctly, how it applies to varsity versus sub varsity. Right. So because we missed it, they, we have to allow them, no, no, or no. we get to decide about sub varsity. Well, if we decide to allow them to participate, they can only, they can participate. only play so, in some varsity okay, schools. Sure that, but that's a that's a board decision for this year. For this year, for they this year, and the next year we make another we make decide another. again. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to come back again. Okay. Uh, because they they didn't address next year, and there's no they didn't address because we were late. Right. Uh, can we reverse that? They, they don't address that, and, and somebody's already asked that question. It's got to be there somewhere. They're going to keep pushing. We have pushed it every year so far. The the the, the um, FAQs talk of that they sent. The it, UIL has done a lot and a little of work at the same time because their FAQs continually, when you look at them, will say that's not part of the law, and then they quote the law again. So all these answers are the same quote of, of the law over and over and over and over again. So they're basically saying, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, it's real concerning that UIL doesn't even know how some of this is going to work. Which also brings up in the next point is they haven't designated how that's going to count in your UIL numbers. And this is a count here. So they're saying something will be counted, but they're not telling you how to count it. Like number of students? Yes, for your UIL alignments. Do we know how many students we have and <coughs> would want to participate in? I have our number that's even home, home school. You don't know, if you don't know about it, then no one's participating. So. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, is when our kids had, like last year or this year school year before, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, we did have some kids that they had COVID. And I think some parents had contacted the school 
they wanted a homeschool program. Well, that was last year. Yeah, that was last we year. had they wanted a homeschool, and we opted not to let them come in and play yeah. sports. Sport. Yeah, I mean, last year you could have for the, the whenever they opted out of I mean, COVID right. learning, so they could right. still stay right. right. no, 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 It was all right. 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 It was remote learning. It was remote Right. They could still learn. It was the remote learning, not the home school. Right. I'm sorry. I said, are we remote learning? So we didn't allow that. I mean, and I know we kind of chatted a little bit, but as far as if we were to allow this to happen, we would be, we would pay. For everything, we would the, the risk, the liability would all be on the school district for that child. Just like any other child. Just like any other child. And that one particular event, they're, they're an idolized these students. But we don't get money for them to be an enrolled daily. Don't get any funds. Kind of but it could throw us in a mixed bracket right. as far as being counted. Counted. Right. Yeah, because who knows what you guys are going to do? With yeah, we're going to be honest right. with you. They haven't right. said that yet. Yeah, they they're going to make it up when they get there. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you about that. Then. So our, we have an action tonight that we need. I mean, is this well, serving? We have, to, we have to either say yes or no. Ready for somebody to, to to move to not do it. Is this something that would be voted on every year? I think it's going to come up every year. That's my opinion. I don't know that, uh, but they've been kicking this around for ten years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's come back every year. They're pushed. The homeschool people have pushed it big time each each year. Eventually, also, UIL, UIL will make them rule on it, you know, until they get pressure that they have to make it. They're leaving it up to the school district. But see, here's what UIL is doing. They're putting it back on the school That's district. They're saying, yeah. oh, look what we did for you, homeschool. We're, we're giving you that opportunity. Right. But schools, that's on y'all. But we're not going to tell you how we're going to count it yet. Yeah. Well, schools are kind of going, wait a minute. Uh, if you're on that line, which we're going to be kind of on that line between Thanks. big school and small school football, mm -hmm. and it kicks us over and, you know, it could be... It's not good. Deadly to our program. Right. I mean, I, I think that, I think it's, you know, athletics are a great way to potentially bring kids back into the school, but there's just so much unknown here. You know, there's just so much unknown. You know, I, I would typically tend towards doing it, but not, not knowing what we don't know, right. and how it's going to affect us, and... And maybe next year we might know more than what we know now. Well, they're going to, this will be a count year, so we'll know how they count them. That, that will be for sure. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm just, I mean, well, I'm a proponent of if you want the benefit of public school, and put your kids in public school. I mean, that's that's my opinion of it. I mean, if you're, if you want, if you, if you want the benefits of it, and the camaraderie, and the sports, and the extracurriculars, then put them in school every day and let them be counted and let the school benefit, I mean, and let that child benefit from being in a public school. It's, you can't pick and choose what you want to participate in. And, and the, the, the folks that are heading our programs have have discussed this, right? Yes. Yes. And, and their thoughts are? All athletics said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quit, quit no. Uh, our band director, he's like, yeah, that's, that's, I'm good with it if they do. But how do you, do, I mean, do you require the kids that they have to come to practice? Do you require, I mean, I, and then how do you, and then what is discipline? And what is, I mean, if they're not, because if they act up, then, I mean, you, you can only keep them from playing or not put them in or, or what have you. But, but it's not, they're not cohesive in the group. They're not, I mean, they're can't put them in ISS. Right, right. You can't, I mean, you can't put them in ISS. You have no, you, you have just, I mean, I don't want to say repercussions, but you just, your influence over that child is little to none. And that's where the, the, um, the FAQs, because the law is actually very short. I don't know if y'all, but, but it, there's this big bullet of things that you can require them to do. You can require them to practice, you can require them to do, you know, all the traveling, do the scheduling, do the, all the da 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 And so that question came up. Can we require that they come to the class? If, if, if practice is in a class, can they require to be athletics? They quoted that part of the law. So some lawyer is going to say yes or and no, and there it's going to end up in court. You know, because somebody's going to say you have to come to class, and this person doesn't want to their kid to have to come to class. They're homeschooled. Yeah, but they on the athletic part they follow the guidelines of what, what your athletic policy is. 
you have to they have to follow that. So I mean, it's there's just so I many. Mean, I would think you want to. So I many of those. Good. So, can I move that Iowa ISD does not allow homeschool students to participate in athletics? We certainly can. You can do that, or we can no action. I mean, it's complete local decision. I don't think we have to act one way or another, but I mean, we can do it that way. I'd like to have an answer. That way, if somebody comes up here, it's not tabled. We can say this year we said no. Got it. We got a motion. Second by Tammy. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, motion carries 7 0. Item 14 consideration of TASB localized policy manual 117. This is the one we tabled. Yes. Yeah. I think we're, are we at a deadline? Yes. I mean, I still have the same concerns. <laughs> and, and, I, 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 I don't have the, share those concerns. Was that with in the emergency? Mm -hmm. in the the CH local on bottom of page one. It, it, it goes it on to page two. But construction. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> and I mean it says we can change it. <clears throat> it, it says that uh, in there somewhere. I, I saw it that you know it was a yeah in, in the bolded on page two the third the recommended dele delegation provision is optional. Re Review it, the new text to ensure it aligns with, the, and, and if your district does not wish to add this provision or has other revisions. I mean, my issue is, is we're, we're giving any superintendent the ability in a catastrophe or an emergency, the ability to do uh, replacement construction or repair of equipment or facilities, but we're not, there's nowhere in here that says that the other limitations on on the amount they can spend are there, you know, or, you know. I think it has to be tied back to the safety of children. Well, but. And so I know you can define that in, in stretch definition. <laughs> well, didn't we vote at one time the, what the superintendent's max spend was? Well, that's different. This is. Yeah, this is, is yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I, I, there's, it does specifically say that they have to go through you know the the, the, the bid rules, rules, but it doesn't say they have to abide by the limitations that we've placed on them. So I mean, it would never happen. But you know, there, there's a tornado and all of, you know a building is destroyed and we're rebuilding. You know, yeah, I don't think you get done that. Well, I mean, but that that's the thing. You know, with with Zoom, I mean, we we've had emergency board meetings to replace air conditioners the day they went out. You know, I, I, I don't know why we couldn't ever have an emergency yeah. board meeting. I know you can do that. Well, what uh, about you? I know we do that board board. Well, I mean. It was because it was under COVID. Yeah, it was because it was of COVID. COVID. So that was, okay, that, so that was right. the exception. Right. Okay, all right. That was and you might be under an exception depending on what the. Yeah, there the are emergency the exceptions. Right. That was because it was declared, right? Right. But, I mean. So we, I think we had met and declared we declared we were in a state of emergency and given Mr. Martindale's right. at that meeting. So, so I, I mean, if you're not, don't, don't do it. We'll just and roll the dice. We had it where the officers meet and vote on it. No, the attorney said don't do that. Don't do that. No, we, we looked at that. <laughs> and this is a local. So do you think all school districts are putting in their local policy? <coughs> I mean, it says local, so I guess most of them. Are. So you're just. Tasby's pushing it for everybody the same thing. Isn't that usually all the policies are about the same? Ninety percent of the, the people who subscribe to Tasby. Hmm. What's our deadline on this? You said we were back up on that. I thought well, we got to get it adopted because there's other things that need to go in place. Yeah, and I'm fine with the other stuff. Yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, even if we said, you will just take that out. Okay. We, it gives you that much heartburn. Take it out. Strike it. We strike it. So let's look and see what it would look like. Though. And we have to submit it as optional. So. Mm -hmm. no wonder, look on the wrong number. Okay. Fourteen page two. Yeah, all these so, other all these other things are important. <coughs> the perch under purchasing and acquisition CH to strike CH local. CH legal, right? Local, local. CH local. Under yeah. strike CH local under the. Uh, at the very bottom, okay. Yeah, that's the only CH local in there. Mm -hmm. And so we're still on strike CH local. So we're going to put, uh, approve as presented striking, uh, with the exception of striking CH local under purchasing and acquisition. 
Is that everybody comfortable with that? And CV local. And what? CV local. Send that out to CV. Where? Oh, that's the construction part of it. And it refers back to recommended change at CH local. So, yes, in CV local. I don't think that one's <coughs> is a threat, but it goes hand in hand with it. You want CV local also? We're going to take it out CH local and CV local. Oh, yeah. I mean, all it says is, back it's, yeah, it just refers back to it. Yeah. yeah. So we'll make that recommendation and make sure they state both of those, CH and CV. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can yeah, I make a motion? Uh, make a motion to recommend. Uh, Revise the lead local policies as recommended with the exception from TASB, with the exception of omitting uh, the CH local and the CV local, um, according to the TASB policy manual update 117. Okay. Okay. That's, yes, that's good. A second. Any further discussion? I, I do have just one question. Can I, uh, on all of these. Um, policies where they're updating SPED programs and academic achievement for graduation. I mean, do you guys get training on that to make sure that we're, I mean, that we're following that? All our counselors, they get all the training. Okay. They know all, cool stuff all, that. all that. They know okay. a number of things that we have yep. that are rule required and mandated. They come up and Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, Agreeing to all these policy changes and then never doing anything with it. Let's go off and make sure that we are yeah. on <laughs> Okay. But that, our counselors are they're, they're good. That's it. I guess our counselor will have one high school. Any more questions or discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries. 7 0. Item 15. Consideration of teacher appraisers. And professional development and appraisal system calendar for 2021 2022 school year. And it's in your packet. Do you have anything to add? We just got to have it on record. I have one um, question. So, if, if for any reason that we change, so that you if for any reason that we change superintendents between now and the end of the school year, right. You just go back in and make him the alternate. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, I hope we don't have to make all that, but, you know. I got to go get my T-test. Oh, okay. uh, refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> so T-test, is that the, that's the, um, the uh, appraiser, appraisal of the T-test. T-test is teachers, T-pass is principals. And every teacher, uh, it is is reviewed every year, correct? Uh, that depends on how it's set up. Our policy states that okay. uh, it's optional. There are ways that you can do every two years or three years. I think it's up to three years. I mean, are, do we, if you can do it, but our policy says that we're doing it every year, does that mean we are doing it for every we year? We are doing it every year. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure that if I mean if we're if we tell a teacher that they're they're going to be uh, uh, reviewed and you know that this is the the process where you know they they're reviewed and then I, I am assuming there's a meeting where they go over the review. Yes. That well, should have already done that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll move to. <clears throat> approve the teacher appraisers and the professional development calendar as presented. I'll second. A motion is second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries 7 0. Do you have anything on employment? Nothing. So, no closed session items. I move to adjourn. Second. Second by 4 <laughs>